Welcome back, and welcome to Search Modes, Fields, and Field Discovery. As we've seen before, the Search app has three modes, and you can select the mode right under the Time Picker in the search bar. Splunk has Fast Mode, Smart Mode, and Verbose Mode. In Fast Mode, no fields are discovered except the default three metadata fields that we talked about. And Splunk assumes that you know which fields you want and you've specified them in the search string if you use fast mode. Obviously fast mode is fast because you're doing the work of specifying the fields instead of Splunk's engine trying to figure out what the fields are. Smart mode attempts to return the best results for whatever search you're running. It attempts to detect and return interesting fields. And verbose mode uses the Splunk engine to detect and return all of the fields. And verbose mode is slow, but if you're not sure what fields you will want to report on. If the data set is, for, for example, unfamiliar to you. Okay, so smart mode and verbose mode, I said that Splunk uses Splunk's engine to discover fields. Well, how does that actually happen? During field discovery, Splunk detects fields that are key value pairs. That's what a field is in Splunk. Key equals value. So error equals failed. Level equals critical. Those would be examples of fields. Error equals and then anything. That would be an example of a field. Anything equals anything. That's an example of a field as well. When we saw the field browser on the left hand side, Notice that the first 50 key value pairs are displayed there. And then it has a little drop down that says show more fields if more are available. But one of the whole points of this class was that Splunk can, can also deal with unstructured data where things are not always in nice key value pairs. And what if that happens? What if the data is a bunch of, well this, this data is I would say semi-structured, but what if there are key value pairs what if there are fields in this data, for example, that you want to extract, but that are not in nice, neat key value pairs? Well, Splunk has a very powerful and very useful field extraction tool. And it's pretty easy to use. The engine behind it works using regular expressions. However, Splunk has some tools built in to help you because regular expressions are kind of a pain to write and not everybody knows how to write regular expressions. And of course it's beyond the scope of this class, but I will show you how to use the built-in tools with Splunk in our demo. Let's go to the search app. And let's bring in our homework data. We could type post equals homework or we could click on the data summary button like I've just done and click homework. We could also just type host equals homework since when we imported it the first time that's the host name value we gave to that data. Notice it is a key value pair. Host is a metadata for Splunk. So Splunk always brings in these three selected fields. Host source and source type that is default Splunk metadata and here are our search modes over here. Right now it is in verbose mode because I've only specified a host. So Splunk is thinking this person doesn't know what fields are in this data so I better go in verbose mode and try to figure out all the fields that are available. And here we are and the first 50 are listed here and one more is available. And let's say that none of these fields that Splunk has found in verbose mode is a field that we want. So we can go to extract new fields and this will bring us to the Splunk field extraction tools. And if you're really good with regular expressions, you can write the regular expression yourself. But the first thing we need to do is select a sample. So let's select an event in our data that has the field we want. And let's just say, for example, it's this. 
And now Splunk shows us the event data. And we'll click Next. And we'll select Method. Now either one of these would work since this is a CSV file, it's still nicely laid out with comma separation. So we could use delimiters where Splunk automatically attempts to extract the fields and you can, you can specify which fields are which. But I want to show you this regular expression method because it deals, it does a lot better with unstructured data. So click on regular expression and then next. And now it says highlight one or more values in the sample data to create fields. So let us say that this field, right, this value right here is a field that we want to keep track of and a field we want to use in our search, but it doesn't have a key value pair so Splunk didn't detect it. But it's just a random numerical value, but let's say that it's important to us. So we'll highlight it and Splunk will ask for a field name. And let's say that it is a system ID. Now it says look through the data and verify that the right fields have been extracted. And Splunk has actually written a regular expression behind the scenes. And let's click next and we'll validate this. Everything looks good. If there's if Splunk has detected something that was not what we meant to extract, we can just simply click the X there. And it's sort of teaching Splunk. We'll validate it. And we'll name the extraction. I don't really care what it's named, so I'm going to leave the default. And we'll set permissions. I like to set all apps unless there's some specific reason that I am restricting access. And we'll click Finish. And we'll click Explore the fields I just created. And instead of this auto-generated search that Splunk has given us, let's go back to Host equals Homework. And notice that now this field, system ID, is detected and it is those numerical values. So now we can use that field in our search. And we'll bring in all the system IDs and let's make a simple table. with system ID and maybe state. Now we can know which systems are in which state. Now Splunk stayed on verbose mode, but we could actually do fast mode on this since we've specified the fields we want and we've created a table with it. Fields and field extractions are extremely powerful in Splunk and the good news is they're not hard to learn or to use. So I thank you for joining me in this segment and I look forward to seeing you next time.